So hi, um, my name's Bob Samuel. I'm the executive director of the Ethereum Classic Cooperative. Um, I've been in that position since January. Uh, I previously worked uh, at the foundation, at Consensus, uh, on the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, where I've worked for the setup of that, and then I was the, uh, the co-lead architect during that setup, and then I was the uh, secretary of the technical working group and the, the vice chair of the, uh, the TSC, um, and I've, I've done stuff in, in Hyperledger as well. And, uh, and now I find myself uh, in Classic. Um, so I'll just say a little bit about what, what, what's been happening. Um, we really have uh, a, a resurgence uh, within Classic right now, where after several years of fairly inactive kind of status, um, we've got forward movement again. You know, you had the, uh, you had the split at the Dow Fork, uh, there was the, the monetary policy change and disabling of the bomb, and then that was about what, what had happened. Um, but what's changed is, is really uh, that we have funding now, um, that with uh, ETC Labs, um, we, we have effectively a, like a, a, a Joseph Lubin for classic. Um, so I'd, the way I'd describe things is very much like things were in, uh, in Ethereum land in 2015. If you've got a good project idea, you have some money, you have some money, you have some money. Uh, so we're moving. And the, the most uh, recent and big thing that we had was Atlantis. So Atlantis was our first hard fork for quite a long time. And, and what happened there was that we, uh, we forked in um, Byzantium opcodes. So Classic is now not very far behind uh, ETH. Um, so for Atlantis, we had three clients with support. Uh, that's uh, Multigeth, which is a downstream um, of the foundation geth. Um, we had Classic Geth, which is a very ancient <laughs> code base, which was basically forked at the time of the DAO, uh, and then cobbled along for a little bit further, but uh, is essentially in deprecation state. So Classic Geth is not going to make it to the next fork. It's going to be a, a, a happy retirement for Classic Geth as we, we, we clap it clap it into retirement for its service, but uh, its time is over. Um, Parity has had uh, support for both ETC and ETH throughout, so that's not a problem. Um, and, and those are the, the three code bases that we've had uh, for Atlantis. Um, the other um, primary code base that there is on Classic uh, is Mantis, uh, which is from IOHK. Now, at the time that uh, Classic started, Charles Hoskinson uh, re returned um, in, into the Classic side and, and said that as a, a, an Ethereum founder, he, helped, you know, he felt a responsibility to support the, the original vision, that he felt that, uh, um, that really he should, he should get involved and, and help out. So he hired a community manager um, and he funded uh, Let's Talk ETC podcast as well. Um, and also Kevin Lord has done social media and uh, sort of outreach bits and pieces as well. Um, but they spent two years uh, building a new code base in Scala, um, which is one of the, the tersest Ethereum clients that there is, and apparently is also the lowest memory footprint and highest performance but nobody is really aware of it within the broader Ethereum ecosystem because it's been a classic only client. So nobody, nobody knows about it. Um, work started on that code base to add um, ETH support as well, but that team essentially got sort of defunded and slowed down and stopped as of December of last year, really with uh, Charles refocusing his efforts on Cardano 
uh, and really sort of half exiting the, the classic ecosystem because of continual infighting and really feeling that um, he couldn't do the interesting things within classic that he wanted to. You know, he, he sort of said, if, if classic is just the Litecoin of Ethereum, who wants to do that? Anyway, we recently had the uh, Ethereum Classic Summit uh, in Vancouver, uh, my hometown of Vancouver, um, and Charles, uh, close to the end, only a few weeks to come, finally agreed that he would come and speak. So Charles had the, uh, the closing keynote, um, and through the conference, we, we basically like romanced him back in, <laughs> I charmed him back in, um, and and really, what's going to happen there is that uh, you know that code base is going to be is going to be revived. So as we go into our forthcoming hard forks, Mantis should be added into the set of of clients there. So uh, classic Geth will be retired, and you will have Geth, um, and you will have Parity, um, and you will you will have Mantis coming in as well. But not just that, you will also have Hyperledger Bizu. Now you may have heard of, of Bizu. So Bizu was pro previously called Pantheon. And um, where that code base has come from is when I was involved with setting up the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, myself and Shahan were the co-lead architects. And we did the, um, the tech talk at the launch event at which I, I said, so Shahan is the distributed systems PhD, and I'm the cheerleader. Uh, so he basically then has spent the last two years back inside consensus building a new code base from scratch. Uh, so that is uh, permissively licensed. It's a, Apache 2. Um, it is written in Java. Um, and it is Ethereum mainnet compatible also supports Clique, also supports Istanbul, uh, Istanbul BFT, also supports privacy features, and is also compliant with the EEA specification. So it's really like, it's all of the stuff. It's all of the good stuff. And it's, and it's really something that we've been striving for, I think for about three years, is to get to you know, a, a, a very high quality code base in a language which is, you know, broadly used um, under that kind of licensing and governance within the Linux Foundation, which basically lets large enterprises come and engage. Because I think really what you want to have with Ethereum clients is, is something like, you know, Linux kernel kind of model. That, you know, you start out, well, hey, here's a project just for fun, but then things get serious and, 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 um, and, and basically enterprises start depending on that stuff and they start picking up the load. You know, so you see uh, the Linux kernel, you know, the major contributors are, um, you know, they're, they're, they're big companies that, that have a need for that. Because really what you want is, is you want these big companies to be doing, you know, carrying the engineering load. You know, you can't have the, the Geth team with four or five people carrying the weight of the world on their back forever. Like that just isn't going to work. You need large professional teams, and that's really what started um, with with Pantheon. So, what the classic uh, cooperative is doing is is we are funding um, etc support um, in in Bezu. Um and it's the very first thing that's happening within that code being within Hyperledger. So, very soon, what you will have is a client which can run. Um, Ethereum mainnet, ETC mainnet, uh, Coty, Gawley, or any of these private scenarios. Um, so Chainsafe are doing the work, who um, did the work on Classic to get that working for Atlantis. Now, to work on Hyperledger code bases, you don't have to be a Hyperledger member. Anyone can work on those. But we love Hyperledger, so we joined Hyperledger as well, we're applying to. Um, so Hyperledger, for anyone that doesn't know, is a, a collaboration project within the Linux Foundation, uh, which is a, an umbrella for a set of open source blockchain technologies. So Hyperledger Fabric is the one that you hear about all the time. That originally came from IBM. 
the Sawtooth that originally came from Intel. You have Burrow, which is a, an EVM, but not mainnet compatible, that was done by Monax. You have um, Iroha, um, and you also have Hyperledger Indie, which is a, a, an identity piece. The other thing that we've done is apply to join the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. And, well, why would we do that? Well, the, the fact is that uh, you've seen announced here at this conference the, uh, the mainnet initiative where the Ethereum Foundation and the EEA are basically working together on specking out um, use cases and um, you know, protocol definitions for use of, of, of the mainnet for enterprise scenarios. So really, the, the, the specification work that you've had happening within the EA has primarily been about private or consortium chains. When we started the EA, the vision was that the mainnet and, and you know, basically private and public, these things would converge. And that's where we're getting to right now. And what you'll, what you'll see really with Classic being involved as well is that the specifications really like the yellow paper. If you look at the yellow paper, the yellow paper assumes that you have one network in the world. You know, everything is F mainnet. Hard, you know, hard coded block numbers in the specification. And I mean, that's, that, that is not the way to do a specification of a, of a technology stack of a protocol. You should really have a, a modular setup that's like, here is what an Ethereum stack looks like. Appendix A, here is the definition of an, of, of an, of an F mainnet. Here's the definition of an ETC mainnet. Here's the definition of a, 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 you know, a private chain running a proof of authority. So we're going to help with that. Another thing that we've done recently is revived the old website. We, we had um, a maintenance issue. One of the first things that my predecessor at the co-op, uh, Anthony Lusardi, did was uh, commission a, a spanky new WordPress website. Um, but the problem with that is WordPress websites, you, only your admin can update it. So we didn't really have a good means for the community to contribute changes back in. Um, the earlier website that we had was was based on GitHub, and you could just do pull requests. But you know, it didn't look great. So what we've done over the last little while is basically revived that old website, but made it look nicer, and updated the content. And the guy who originally did the web design on that has just reappeared. <laughs> um, he actually attended the summit because he sees everything happening in Classic and is like, "Oh, guys, this is quite interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back." So he can come back and help with the website, because he did it originally. The other problem that we've had is uh, problems of, of east-west communication. Um, specifically, you know, our Chinese community and, and other Asian communities have been very disconnected with the West. And for China specifically, a primary reason for that um, is, is, is the Great Firewall. So if you are in mainland China, you can't access Twitter. You can't access Discord. You can't access GitHub. Um, and specifically, the communication channels are, are a major problem. Because the Discord and the Twitter, that's where all of the communication happens. So what I've done is, well, what's the answer? Well, you, you use WeChat. You can use WeChat anywhere in the world. So we now have ETC Global Comms channel, which is just an open, open uh, WeChat channel where we've gathered all of the, uh, all of the community people from all of the sides, and myself and Yaz. Um, and all of a sudden, these, these communication gaps, barring time zones, they're done. Everyone is very communicative <laughs> if you can communicate. <laughs> so we're doing that. The other thing that we're going to do is on that main website, we are adding um, internationalization. Because we also had this, this um, um, siloing thing of, the ethereumclassic.org was English only. And then other communities have built their own websites. But then, you know, they don't have, they're having to replicate, well, here's a tutorial about how we write a smart contract and what is, is classic and so on. Um, but by having um, that language support within that base um, website, most countries, maybe that's enough that you just point to ethereumclassic.org and do the, uh, the drop down. 
you know, like normal websites, like professional people can do, but somehow we had not done. Um, so we're going to do that. And I mean, that's not to say, well, you have to only use the official website. Uh, obviously, anyone can do whatever they like on their own and add their own pieces, but we should have that basic information available to everyone. And one of the other things that we can have in there is blog posts. Um, so this site allows you to use simple markdown for blog posts. We have been using Medium. Medium, again, blocked by the firewall. Um, so the flow that we will have instead is blog posts happening on that website that's accessible anywhere in the world, probably in English first. And then if you are flipping to one of the other language choices, well, you're going to get it in English if there isn't a translation. If there is, you're going to get it in your own language. So that's a pattern which is not only breaching, you know, bridging East and West, um, it's also bridging other communities, Italian, German, French, you know, lots of these uh, country-specific ones that they're not necessarily developers, you know, that they are enthusiasts who can probably do a translation but, you know, they're, they're, they're essentially receiving information. You know, they're not necessarily ever going to be doing protocol changes or changes to clients. But open, open that stuff up. The other piece that we have is that the, is that the Classic um, has signed a contract with Masari. So Masari provide basically high quality uh, financial information on, um, on particular coins. And they're, they're also showing developer activity, you know, where your repositories are, uh, you know, how many, how many, what your, what your transaction rates are, and, and a lot of information about how the governance works, what legal entities are involved, how decisions are made, what the issuance is, and so on. Um, there hasn't been high quality information on, um, on Classic. And, and something as simple as the fact that we've had sort of messed up repositories and things have been pointing at Ethereum project where actually the work is happening in Ethereum Classic or in uh, another area, you get this false data saying, hey, there's no developer activity, there's no, being, there's no, no commits have happened, and, and that's just wrong. Um, and, 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 but really having that public disclosure is something that's very important to me. I, I've been maintaining this conflict of interests statement myself um, for two years now, where I, I list essentially all of my financial arrangements, all of my associations, all of my historical salaries, my crypto holdings, my tax filings, everything. Um, because I think that in a, in a sea of scammers, you distinguish yourself by being transparent. Um, so that's what we've been up to. Um, We've got pending changes. You know, I, I, we, we're basically, I think, going to fast follow Istanbul. So within a few months, ETC is going to be caught up, um, and you know, moving between chains is going to be very trivial. And beyond catching up, we're actually going to have, you know, a few a few further changes. So amazingly, um, perhaps ETC is actually going to be objectively better than F1 within a few months, which I think is going to blow people's minds. Gas prices will be lower, the bloat will not be there, the irregular state uh, transaction will not be there, um, and uh, state channels work. There's no need to bloat the L1 because we've got working state channels now. Um, and uh, you know, so I think in a few months time, we're gonna be in a, in a really great place and people are gonna be very surprised to say, even if you don't have any ideological alignment, it's just maybe a better deployment choice. Okay, and there's my time up. Has anyone got any quick questions? Yep, so Masari will have that information. Generally speaking, I believe we've got a, a reasonable amount of transactions, but they're primarily value transfers. There is a DAP ecosystem, but it's weak. Uh, and that really is because these foundational things have been missing. You know, w when we're at that point of, of having those foundations, I think we are going to get an awful lot of uh, DAP developers supporting both, moving over, uh, really, because it's easy to do so, and it's going to be sort of ch cheaper and cheaper and better. Uh, there's lots of things that have been doing to help that onboarding, some of which uh, uh, Terry announced earlier, like uh, like Gitcoin, 
uh, Swarm support um, with MetaMask. I think we, we can get MetaMask really very soon with some of the changes that they announced. Um, so I, I think we can have a Moloch DAO for funding, a whole range of things which, uh, you know, really should be, the, the story should be all of the tools that you love on Ethereum, same deal on Classic. Uh, so 51% attacks are possible on any chain. Um, that's the nature of, of, of proof of work. Um, something, though, that I think maybe people don't kind of clock is that 51% attacks are not necessarily disastrous to the network. They attack single participants who have poor trust models, specific, specifically usually exchanges. You know, an exchange who has received stuff and, and you know, released things without waiting a suitable amount of, of confirmations. If you have less hash power, well, you, you really need to wait for a lot more confirms uh, before uh, proceeding. I mean, that's the sort of stuff that only really generally affects, you know, large value transfers. If you're just doing little state changes of, you know, dappy stuff, you know, just don't wait a lot of confirms anyway. I mean, I guess it's like, well, you know, a bus pass or whatever it is money. It's not hard money, but that's fine. You know, not everything has to be rock hard money. So I think, you know, the answer is that you, you, you are going to have that security at the bottom layer and, you, you know, you get less and less uh, as, you, as, you, as you go higher up. And really the thing that is going to get that security is having more hash power. And that will happen as the developers come over. As more and more activity is happening, that attracts the hash, that gets you the security. And there is no other answer than that really for, for, for POW. That's the nature of it. Um, so we have to get the activity. When we get the activity, we'll get the, we'll get the hash and we'll get the security. Thank you.